Okay, in this video we'll be discussing the hybridization of CH3Cl. And it's good to already know how to make Lewis structures and how to do electron configurations because that's going to save a lot of time. Now, um, when we decide what the hybridization of our central element here, it's carbon, we can do a shortcut by simply counting the number of bonds, which we have one, two, three, four. Or we could count the number of lone pairs, and we have zero here, so we could automatically say it's sp3. And let me clarify, when I say the number of bonds, we're not counting a double bond as two, we're still counting it as one. So really, you could say is, how many atoms is this central atom connected to? And how many lone pairs does it have? And if you add all that up, you'll figure out its hybridization. Now that doesn't really tell us why we're doing this, why we're even hybridizing in the first place. And the reason why we hybridize is to explain molecular geometry. If we didn't hybridize, if we did not hybridize, our molecule would look really ugly. It would not even explain electron repulsion. All the coulombic forces would be everything would be destroyed. Anyways, let's go through why we hybridize. All right. So this is carbon's electron configuration. We have 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now look, we did not include this 1s orbital. The reason why is because that is not part of our outer shell. It's not our valence electrons. It's too close to the nucleus. It's not going to exhibit any bonding. So we can totally discard that and make it a lot simpler. So let's look here. We have two electrons in our 2s orbital, and we have two electrons here in our P's. This PX, PY, PZ is just explaining the, the plane, the geometry of planes of P orbitals, how one goes straight up, one goes straight across, and one goes in and out of the screen, if you want to think of it that way. Now, if we look here, we have two places where we can bond. We can bond here, and we can bond here. However, we have one, two, three, four times we're going to bond. So that, 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 wouldn't, be, that wouldn't be possible. So what we can do here is move one of these S electrons to our 2PZ and hybridize our orbitals so that we have four regions we can bond. And the reason why we are able to do this is because from this 2S to this 2P orbital, it only requires a very small amount of energy. So let's do that. So we bumped up our S electron to hybridize it. Now keep in mind, well, we can double check our, our steps. We have one, two, three, four orbitals here, and we have one, two, three, four orbitals here. So what we're really doing is combining our S orbital with our P orbital, and that makes SP3. And another reason we have three right here on this P is because we're using one, two, three orbitals, P orbitals when we're hybridizing. If we only hybridize two orbital, two P orbitals, it'd be two, uh, it'd be SP2. If we only hybridize one P orbital, it'd be SP. And that explains that. Um, now we can see here we have one, two, three, four regions where we can bond. And that is great. So that explains why we hybridize. So let's just draw that. So our, car our carbon atom has a sp3 uh, hybridization. And these drawings up here are just representing our orbitals. This right here is an S orbital. This right here is a P orbital. Well, PY orbital, PX orbital, and a PZ. I kind of tilted it to make it look like it's coming out of the screen and into the screen at the same time. It's kind of like that Z plane. And uh, this right here is our SP, SP3 orbitals. And that's just a combination of the S and the P. So when we do that, we'll have we'll have uh, four of these because we have four sp3s you can count this you can count the a one right here on this s if you just want to do one plus three it's four we have four orbitals so let's just duplicate this four times or really three times because we already have one so there we go we have an sp3 orbital going right here we have a sp3 orbital let me fix this it's not working for me there we go let me tilt this there we go 
take this SP we're gonna tilt it down here and we're gonna take this SP3 orbital and we're gonna tilt it over here now we're gonna be using 1s orbitals to bond right here where these hydrogens would bond to the, what is hydrogen would bond to this carbon the reason why we're using a 1s orbital is because hydrogen's electron configuration is 1s1 it only has a s orbital so this s orbital can bond with this sp3 orbital so you could say right here this is a s s2 sp3 bond so between these atoms right here is sp s to sp3 let's duplicate this so we have another one because we have three hydrogens so we're making three s to sp3 so duplicate it again there we go oh i guess i didn't duplicate it there we go now you can argue this chlorine has a p just a a p orbital that's going to be bonded or you could say it's an sp3 because we have a two 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 because one plus one plus one plus a bond here so it'd be equal four and we could say it's sp3 however when we're concerned about geometry we we only really need to focus on the central carbon so you can make an argument for either case for this chlorine but in this example i'm just going to say this chlorine has a p a p orbital being bonded to this s sp3 to p orbital the reason why i say this is because chlorine's electron configuration is 3s 3s2 3p5 and let me put a space between this so that doesn't get really confusing we only have one uh, p orbital that does not have a valence electron and we could insert that with this sp3 so this could be a sp3 to a p bond it's not really important what's important is to figure out why carbon is able to hybridize and that is because it needs to have four total bonds and we hybridize to fulfill that we have one two three four it's not really important to construct this other part of the molecule but that's what our central carbon would have an sp3 i hope this video helped and it didn't get too confusing